Hello and welcome to Roguelike Dolls. This is Molly and I'm playing MotoGP 2021. We are starting a new career in career mode for the channel. We'll start at Moto3, the uh, sort of debut beginner class of professional motorcycle racing uh, and work our way up to MotoGP. We'll be using the full calendar and not the actual calendar. The difference is some events kind of get canceled or moved around in the year. Uh, this is a pretty inconsequential decision, so I think we're going to go with Ryan. Just because he has a better contract search, but honestly with the statistics for the starting uh, classes, it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, I think any of these are as good as any other one. Uh, I don't see a reason to... I guess this one has a slightly higher starting bonus. It's less per race earnings, but it's kind of nice. Um, I guess I won't think about it that much. I think I just want to go based on the color of the bike, which I think this one gives us kind of a nice white bike with some yellow. So we'll, we'll go with it. Um, yeah, I actually ha like how I look right now. So we'll just get started. I'm not gonna worry about playing dress up too much yet. When we get to Moto GP class, we'll probably do a little bit of extra stuff. There's some tutorial messages that we're not gonna worry about. And then there's this stuff, which we're not gonna worry about too much. We're just gonna let it kinda it defaults to a position where it's kind of like, all right, got payments of salaries and we can start researching things. The default uh, placement for this stuff is like, everyone is sorted based on what their relative efficiency is um, in terms of like the amount of research points that they generate. We'll start researching reactivity because it's a little bit more expensive than tire wear and I think a little bit more uh, influential and I think both of those will take four weeks. We're going to check out our riding aids. We're going to be doing pro with none of the assists on and then for race options we're going to be doing maybe medium difficulty. I'm not sure. Uh, five laps is a little short. Um, but I don't want to do full length uh, Moto 3 races. I want to work through Moto 2 and Moto 3 pretty quick and then uh, get on to. We're going to disable bike recovery because I think it's tedious. Um, we're going to get on to the higher classes quicker that way. Um, quick track entry is good. We'll turn off rewind, we'll turn off trajectory aids. There's a little bit of management up front. This is the managerial career. That's kind of the point. Uh, this would not be good for us, although this is a much stronger uh, engineer, but in Moto3 class, you only have the ability to research frame and engine components. So, you know, it's not good and now I think we can just press triangle to get everyone back to work two new candidates all right what do we got yeah you see these guys are not so good either like eventually I guess they would be slightly better in you know the moto 2 or moto GP categories but not panicked about it we're just gonna start this session right away Hello, Diddy Kong. How are you? You stocking Stanley? Is he acting goofy? We did get Stanley some more meds today, so he's not going to be in, uh, you know, pain 
He's apparently going after his food bag. You might hear some crinkling in the background, but, uh, you know, I think he might just be taunting Diddy Kong a little bit. Uh, we're not going to worry too much about our setup either. We're just trying to speed through this stuff. There's these development tests, which are like little challenges to, you know, uh, prepare, or I guess to, you earn some research data. So in, uh, to the best of our ability, we'll be completing these in free practice. I think these are all very doable for us, so we'll just get going. We're gonna tweak one thing with our bike because we have tire wear on. We do not want to burn up all of our hard compound tires. We want to save some for later sessions. So we're going to go with medium tires, which are not um, important to us, or soft tires in the, in the front. They're just like, or in the rear, they're just not as important to us overall for the race. Uh, you only have a limited number of tires for the weekend, so you kind of you don't want to like burn them up all in free practice. You want to be a little bit conservative with them. Uh, off to an amazing start. We have crashed our bike. It's really easy to crash in this game. Um, I played maybe a hundred hours or so of MotoGP 20, but I have kind of a limited experience in this game so far i've probably played you know fewer than five hours maybe overall so it'll be a learning experience and you know that's kind of why i want to start on um moto 3. get a hang of uh the bikes moto 3 is a lot slower and more forgiving than uh MotoGP class, the bikes up there are much more powerful. And that's true in this game, and it's true in real life. We have a strict penalty on, so if both of our tires leave the track at all, it will invalidate our lap, as we just saw there. I kind of did some oversteering. We're just kind of getting a feel for the bike at this point. I'm not like especially good at this game, but I do enjoy it. And that's, you know, I feel like that's the point of video games. And hopefully in this series, uh, you know, I'll improve as we go. I think I'm definitely worse at this game than I was at um, MotoGP 20 but they tend to update all of the, like, the physics, the handling of the bikes in each, you know, subsequent release of the MotoGP series. So you kind of have to relearn what you're doing. Uh, overall, I would say that the games tend to improve in quality year over year, both graphically and, like, in terms of the mechanics and the feel of the bikes. So it'd be a little bit boring if it was just always the same. And also, like, there's definitely always room for improvement uh, in terms of, like, the physics engine and how the bikes feel. So this wasn't a valid lap. It wasn't a particularly fast lap. Let's see if we can beat that. Broke a little bit early, but I didn't go wide, so that was kind of nice. A little bit wide and slow on that one. Didn't need to downshift there. Anytime we hit a rev limiter, we're kind of like burning like speed that we didn't need to burn. 
It was kind of slow through that corner. Oh, jeez, I crashed. We do have bike damage on, although... Not seeing that much of an indication that our bike has been damaged. Kind of a bad recovery. If you've been watching the Isaac series, you know that I like to say that stuff is a warm-up, and this is definitely a warm-up. We have some electronics we could play with. I might turn up traction control a little bit. I think all of the electronics, to a certain extent, if you leave them on a high setting, they do slow you down, but I think they also make the bike slightly more forgiving to ride which could be, you know, good for a player of my caliber, which is not especially high. Oh. Yeah, this lap was even worse. You see, I'm just taking these terrible lines um, through all these corners. That just means there's a lot of room for improvement, so we're not gonna panic about it. I don't really know at this point what sort of editing I'm gonna do to these videos. Obviously, it would be kind of like oppressively long form if I posted like the complete sessions for every single race in all the career modes and also just take a very long time I think and like who would watch that so I'll probably edit it down a little bit um, after we get a decent time in free practice it usually makes sense to skip ahead to um, the qualifiers and then move from there. That was a terrible line. Went a little bit fast into that corner. But we're like eight seconds ahead of our previous lap, so. That's improvement. I. I think my goal is to get down to like a 212 by the end of this practice. If I can hit that, I'll feel really good about this. I don't know how realistic that is, but you know, I would like to be able to skip directly to free practice two, if possible. Or not free practice two, a uh, qualifier two. a much better lap and exit overall so we're looking at like uh 217 okay so we got a little bit of work to do to improve that but i think we'll be getting there before too long um really weird speed choice in that corner did not set us up well for this corner, but that's fine. So we have some we have some improvement in sector one. I know that we could take this a bit faster than we've been taking it, but it left to my own devices. I tend to overshoot that corner a little bit and end up in the green, which is slow and also it invalidates our lap, so that's a waste of time. I'm going way too fast in this corner. 
so that's something I can work on. I think overall there's a little bit of a theme of just being, you know, kind of into our corners a little fast. Uh, that braking was bad. If you brake while you're trying to turn, you'll crash. I don't know what I expected. It might sound like I'm being harsh on myself. I just want to... I, like... Conceptually, in my head, I am totally at peace and have perfect, you know, serenity. I'm not, like, my self-talk here isn't, like, very negative. I'm just, like, making notes about things that I, I can see that I'm not doing that well so that I can, you know, try not to do them exactly the same. I don't necessarily know how to fix all my problems here. If I knew how to fix all my problems, I probably wouldn't be making the mistakes in the first place. However, if I just, you know, continually try to do things a little bit different each time and see what works, eventually I think I'll improve. So, you know, I don't I don't want to come off as overly negative here. It's it's more like just, you know, uh, continually self-evaluating to make sure that we're uh you know not, not just making the exact same mistakes each time a little bit fast into there almost lost the back end but that's fine we'll go a little bit slower into the corner so i think i need to respect the boundaries between you know the the phases of the corners a little bit more so there's like a braking phase where we get into the appropriate speed and then we try to hit the apex and then we try to accelerate out i was a little bit too fast into that corner all right but now we're gonna go braking not get swallowed up we're a lot less wide we could stand to be a bit less wide and if you look up into the top right corner um at least until we uh failed at shifting there um we had quite a time save in that first like sector and a half i don't think i need to break so hard into that corner But you know, the fact that we didn't crash is good. We're not gonna wanna crash in the race, obviously. That would be, um, put us at a serious disadvantage. That was an interesting line. Um, all right, that was, too low of shifting. We didn't need to go quite that slow. So even if we get a pretty good time, I don't necessarily just want to, you know, speed ahead to free practice too, or, um, you know, uh, qualifying. I want to keep on working. All right, so... We got one of our development tests done. I don't remember, or I didn't see which one it was, but that's good. That was probably uh, a little slow in this corner, but it looks like we saved time already, so maybe not. I think we could be a little closer to that inside curb, but we'll, we'll see. That was a really good sector one compared to my previous attempts. We downshifted a little bit weird in that corner, but it's fine. We'll accelerate out of that. Yeah, that was a better line. Um, I get in my head after that corner and then forget to shift. I am on manual uh, transmission. Oh, fuck. All right. That was slow, but okay. He 
You see, and sometimes you have a lap that's pretty good, but if you don't know, like, what you did in each sector that made it good, it's very hard to, like, reproduce it. We had a terrible fourth sector here. But I still think we'll beat our previous lap. Oh, one thing is that we're on power mode three. So we're about to run out of fuel. That's probably explains a lot of our time save is that we had a relatively clean lap, but we were on power mode three, which gives us a lot of extra oomph. So we will return to the pit and think about, um, we will repair our bike. We'll think about what we need to do to get a little bit faster. We'll look at our development tests. Um, qualifying, get ready for the qualifying session by completely completing a valid lap and finishing in at least ninth place. So currently we're in 18th place, but I think we have a shot of getting first if we just get this. And then we have find the right race pace by completing five valid laps in a row. Uh, and I think that's a very doable time for us to do five in a row, and I think that's a good goal, so maybe we'll try to do both of those, and I think if we can do both of those, we'll get this one as well. Um, but it might be a kind of a tall order to do the five valid laps here, because especially if we mess up on, like, lap four, that's going to be, you know, a pain in the butt to... Fix. We're going to save one medium compound front tire for the race. Um, and we're probably going to qualify on softs. We're going to switch up our transmission a little bit. I would like slightly faster first, second, third, fourth is fine. We're, and then faster accelerating. And then we want a higher top speed sixth gear. And we want, I think our final ratio is fine. Uh, all together, this should make us have shorter early gears and longer later gears. Um, so faster acceleration, better top speed. And then we're going to switch the power mode back down to two. I don't think we need to be on power mode three to get a good uh, time. And if we don't get a good time in free practice one, not a big deal. We can always do it in free practice two or free practice three. No biggie. All right, so we accelerated through our early gears quite fast, and I think our top speed is quite a bit higher with this setup. That was a slower first turn. I do think you save a lot of time just by being in power mode three going into um, the first turn. All right, we're not going to worry about the rest of this lap that much. We might actually go down to power mode one just to conserve some fuel so we can do more on power mode two because we're currently in an invalid lap. I think all this um, kind of learning is what makes this game fun for me. I think like most games, I kind of want to be forced to think about, you know, what I'm doing, uh, how I can get better, how to avoid the same mistakes. 
I think that's what makes games fun for me. I think that's uh, a big appeal of The Binding of Isaac is that, you know, you, you're always learning stuff from the game. Oh, way fast into turn one. All right, but it didn't invalidate our next lap, so that's good. We'll go up to power mode three. We'll probably pop it back down to two for um, once we get up to our top speed. That was much cleaner. A little bit early on the gas, not very smooth, so that lost us about half a second. Real wide in that turn. If you want to see uh, Moto GP content that is, you know, more of a high skilled level uh, i think you can check out uh i like robo 46's channel a lot i think he provides good commentary and i think um oftentimes on sunday he'll go through the standings of the actual moto uh gp season that's usually going on alongside uh the release of the video game of course uh <laughs> Uh, Dr. Ace is a very good rider, um, and he puts out pretty reasonable content. I think uh, both these players are excellent to watch. Yeah, that was a, that was a kind of slow lap. We'll, we'll do better. Maybe not on this lap, though. <laughs> oh, that was real sloppy. Well, we took that guy out. Sorry. Um, one thing I'm finding real difficulty in figuring out what gear I should be in most of the time. So I think I may have over dramatically uh, sh uh, made adjustments to my transmission that are uh, making my first few gears pretty unusable. You could kind of do this pyramid stack. Uh, set up in Moto GP 20 so that's why I tried it but I think um, it just doesn't feel quite the same in this game 
so what I'm what I'm finding is I'm ending up in these high gears, and then when I shift down, I immediately get over revved, which you know isn't ideal. So maybe we'll return to the pit. I think. Uh, all right, my bike doesn't need to be repaired. We'll go manual setup. Maybe we'll go for a slightly shorter. Then reduce the final ratio a bit, and we'll see how that feels. Um, I don't really know what's going on there. We'll figure it out sometime, and we'll save this setup. Perfect. And then I think we don't really have too much time for another... lap by the time we're out it's basically going to be the end of the session so we'll hop right into this and maybe we'll put on some soft tires which are going to heat up really fast we're currently in Qatar so it's fairly hot out but we should be able to get like one or two good laps on soft tires in this heat My hope is just to put up a time that will get us into a qualifier two on softs. And then we'll we might do some more practice on like another set of medium tires. We're real wide. But we did maintain a lot of speed, so it's impossible to tell whether or not it's bad. Maybe that turn is what is known as a double apex because there are two um two apexes in the corner and i'm not really sure like what the technically correct answer is to handle that it kind of feels right to be accelerating at both of them but i'm not sure to what degree and when we want to be on the gas In a lot of these corners, it just feels like we're way too heavy with the brakes, maybe a little bit too early as well. So maybe we'll practice just applying the brakes less dramatically. This gearing already feels a lot better than it did in the previous session. So I'm happy about that. Our tires are heating up, but not as bad as I thought they might. Not really sure how this lap is going to turn out, but we'll see. It looks like we're on path for a pretty good time. All right, a 13 is not bad. My strategy of using the softs has so far paid out. Uh, downshifting there cost us like two tenths of a second, which is pretty expensive. Uh, but I think this time will get us that uh, development test achievement as well as a guaranteed entry into qualifier two. 
and I think if we can just stay on pace, um, our tire should give out eventually. We'll sort of probably run up against whatever the lower bounds is of tire grip within this engine, but that's fine. Maybe, maybe it's not that bad, um, and we can get that, uh, five consecutive laps under 216 development test out of their way. I think that gearing change really made all the difference. That was a close one. So we're down a half second-ish on our previous time, but that's fine. We are going to run out of gas before we hit to five laps if we don't turn our power mapping down to two. So we're going to do that, but that should keep us um, in a good fuel state throughout the rest of this free practice. That was really bad braking. Uh, we're gonna return to pit and repair our bike. We have our fastest lap. Um, because we don't need the tires for the race, we're gonna put on another fresh set of softs and try to get five valid laps under 216. Because I think if we get, if we get that and we get this, then we'll be set for the maximum number of developer points. I don't think we need to do this in every race, but if we get, you know, um, if we get it in, you know, one or two of the races, it will kind of pay dividends down the road in terms of our research progress. Uh, you do lose all of your research progress anytime you switch teams. So, you know, it potentially... It doesn't really matter for Moto2 or Moto3 because typically you can fully research your tree inside of one season. For MotoGP, the trees are a little bit larger and more expensive to get through in terms of like development points. Oh, that was real sloppy. We'll see if we can uh, keep the rest of the lap clean enough to avoid going over time. I think we should be able to. Yeah, the, the MotoGP um, trees are a little bit more robust, so it, it might take two seasons of MotoGP to complete a full tree, depending on what, you know, what amount of the development tests in each race you are doing. So if we get into a situation where our rear tire really does give out, I think at this point, it's, we're probably pretty close to being, you know, as over temp as we can be. Or like, as over temp as we can be while incurring additional, you know, kind of penalties for being at max temp. When you get up to the high temp, your tire, I think, degrades faster as well as, um, provides a lot less grip. That was a perfectly fine pace if we can maintain, you know, close to that. 
Oh, that was a little wide, but not slow, which is interesting. It's always interesting when you hit, like, a corner and you think you've done it bad, but you're ahead of your pace. Uh, this is really terrible. It's probably gonna invalidate my lap. Nope, it didn't. I think because it wasn't a time save, it didn't bother to. I don't really know how it works, but I thought we had strict penalties on. I might r get rid of strict penalties in future, um... Uh, future tracks just because I don't know it's not fun to me to just constantly be penalized uh, ideally we would be staying inside of the bounds of our courses because it's faster but I don't know we'll, we'll see how it is I, I, for now I'm just gonna try it out because I think it's you know better to do it that way and not that I'm like entertaining uh you know the idea of becoming a professional MotoGP video game player um but I know that like at competition level that's how they play so oh uh, we have invalidated our lap you know this five valid laps in a row might be a dream for us We are gonna run out of tire here pretty quick. But you know, four out of five development tests is not so bad. I don't wanna burn up all of my tires uh, in free practice. I wish they gave you more tires, but. So we're gonna end the session. Then I think we're gonna go direct to qualifier. And then as long as we get a decent qualifying, right, beat all the Husqvarna. So we got the time attack one. So we just need to qualify ahead of all the Husqvarna riders, which I don't know what that means in terms of like who that is, but hopefully it won't be too tricky. I think we're gonna stick with the softs. For the race, we're gonna go with slightly harder tires, but I think for what we're doing right now, this is uh, perfectly fine. And we're just gonna get out there. No, we're not gonna do that. We're not in uh, qualifier. So we're gonna skip to qualifier one, which will skip us directly to qualifier two because we have um, the fastest time in the combined results. And then our hopes are in qualifying three to just get a fast enough time that we can. Uh, I think our goal is probably first three rows, but we'll see. I don't really know what we have to do to beat the other Husqvarna riders. So we're going to be shooting for pole position, obviously. little bit early on the brakes but it makes it wasn't very smooth either but that felt kind of fast that felt pretty good That felt kind of bad. You know, on the before anyone has finished a qualifying lap, it's kind of hard to tell where you stand. That was really wide in that corner, so we'll probably be doing another lap.
uh, we had to get back on our gas before the apex, and I think a kind of rule of thumb is that if you're sort of able to confidently gun it before the apex, you've overbroken. Uh, we've invalidated this lap, that's fine. I don't think we were in a competitive position for first place quite yet. We'll, we'll try to make a good go of it on our next lap. We might run out of fuel, which would be funny. We will see. You know, this is actually a pretty good time. I don't know if it would have been pole position, but we'll see, we'll see if we can get there. Now that um, one rider does have a valid qualifying time, it should let us see how we do in each section compared to that rider. go way too wide here. We were less wide in this corner on this lap, but still like way too wide. And I think our shifting can still use some work. We're kind of hitting that rev limiter, which means that we're losing some power. Kind of sped into that one a little bit, but I don't think it was the worst. We're losing a lot of grip on our back tire. Going a little bit wide. We're not going to run out of gas, which is good. I don't really know if this will be a good enough time for the qualifier. I think as long as we don't like colossally ruin this last section. We find that was pretty mediocre, but we'll see how we do. It still might be good enough. Yeah, I think that was actually really good. So we'll um, end our session and then I think it's just race time after that. A medium difficulty is probably close to where we need to be. I think I'm a little bit more practiced on Qatar than a lot of other courses. So we, we might bump it up to 35. If I'm just like solidly winning races, we will bump it up if I'm, if I'm suitably challenged. I think we will not bump it up. So I, I think we are looking for a medium compound front and a hard compound rear, probably. I don't know why you gave us a used medium front, but thank you. Probably a bug. I think everything else is more or less fine. And then we will, we got, you know, four or like four to five is pretty good. And I think if we can win this race, we might get that bottom one. But I think we need to place ahead of the other Husqvarna riders. All right, um, not a great launch, not a terrible launch. At the very least, we didn't get a jump start penalty, which is good. Sometimes I do that. Oh, geez, that wasn't good. 
got a track limits warning. We got a horrible crash. Just awful. All right. That's the danger of motorcycle racing, I think, is getting in a horrible crash. But we'll do our best to finish out this race. Oh, jeez. Now I'm kind of like... That, that definitely threw me off. But I think we might be able to catch these guys if we maintain, uh, you know, good riding and not, like, absolutely terrible riding. Oh, I know what happened. When I hit the recommended setup on that um, tire screen, it undid all of the changes to my transmission. So I'm not too proud to go back and fix that. Let's check that out. Um, no, it didn't. I was just plain shitty. All right. Well, <laughs> nonetheless, uh, get into gear. Thank you. I don't really intend on, like, restarting races. I just wasn't sure, like, mechanically how that worked out. I think I just need to take it easier on, like, the first couple laps. is used to riding on those soft tires and on a bike that was pretty warmed up so this is a real different feeling in terms of the handling and tire grip is a lot lower We're currently almost in last place, but uh, I don't think the AI are like especially good, especially like like the medium AI aren't that hard. So as long as I race clean, I think we'll be uh, okay. A lot of crashes. Uh, we really do not want to get a long lap penalty, but that will be interesting if we do. All right, well, that was an awful lap. Let's see if we can do better. I think we can.
We're on track limits warning three of five, which is not ideal, but not, not a killer. If we can stay in the first 15 positions, we'll earn points for the race, which will be good. I don't know what we're obligated to do contractually. I didn't really pay attention too much. But hopefully we remain in good standing with our contract. The riders really like to go down there, and I'm not too proud to take a, you know, win off of simply staying on the bike. Derek Bender just took fastest lap. We're not too far behind the pace, though, of the fastest lap. That's very wide. If we can stay on our bike, I think there's a future in which we have, um, you know, potentially a top 10 finish, which I'll take. I think it would only take like two good clean laps to really pass this whole group of riders, so maybe we can make that happen. Another couple ones bite the dust there. Way too wide. I think we're catching their slipstream a little bit though, and that was a 12 8. It's not too shabby. If we could finish in the top five, I would be very happy. wide. Oh, that's track limits warning four. We really need to finish off this race clean.
Very dangerous. But I think that puts us inside of the top 10. We're way too high a gear there. All right, a 2.5 second, two second gap is a little bit hard to close, but maybe we'll do it. Oh, we almost lost the bike. But we didn't get a track limits warning, which is nice. That might be a track limits warning. Nope. Went a little wide there, not great. I think the gap between me and ninth place is like six seconds or something. No, it's not. All right, no, the gap between me and first place is like six seconds. The gap between me and the person behind me is only like a quarter second. He almost had me, but he went really wide. All right, these two crashed. I was afraid of running into them, so I slowed down. We should be able to overtake them on this straight, though. Yep, we're in their slipstream, and we'll just kind of launch past them, assuming we don't crash into them. Do not crash into them. <laughs> All right, we get it wrecked. Apparently we didn't crash from that, which is fine. All right, we have to serve a long lap penalty. No big deal. That might put us out of the uh, top 10, but. Here's the long lap penalty. Oh, whoops, we fucked it up, but it might still count. Apparently that didn't count. We didn't do it clean enough. That's fine. We're just gonna get like a three second penalty at the end of this race then. So we didn't have time to serve it. Sorry about that. Oh my god. Terrible. For them. So we're on final straight. 
think ultimately we're gonna be like 11th or 12th place because of the long lap penalty, but we'll see. Where did we get? We are... I missed it. Oh well, it will tell us. Oh, we needed to be top 10, oh fuck. Well, there's our debut race. Uh, we overall gained reputation more than we lost and we got very good research data. So nothing bad there. And next time we'll have, where are we? Yeah, we placed 11th, which is not ideal. Uh, but not the worst. Uh, thank you so much for uh, watching this video if you stayed through the whole thing. I'm hoping to release some more MotoGP content soon. We'll just be racing through uh, the series. Uh, I don't think I'm going to include free practice and qualifying in the future videos because it's kind of uh, boring, but... Uh, you know, let me know what you like to see or don't like to see, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.